Listen, bro, I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty. Uh, call me again, Shin, the way I impacted on you. Okay, everybody, want to welcome back to the Gamers Cage today and only today. We are here to talk. That's right about Sonic Frontiers. Right, I want to talk about sort of the state of the game. New, it's officially been basically a month since the game came out. I think it was November eighth. We're November. We're December seventh. So whatever, close enough. We're basically a month. And I've actually had it for more, longer than a month. So it's been more than a month for me. And I just want to talk about sort of you know the state of the game, what we've got going on, what's next and all that stuff so just sort of wrap the wrap all that up you know what i'm saying right off the bat i just want to start with the overall reception of the game it's been so cool just seeing a sonic game that just enjoy it you know what i mean like it's like yes you know there are flaws and stuff like that but like it's so nice to have a new 3d mainline sign game where the general consensus is just this was a fun time and this was awesome this is a good step in the right direction and then like i said the best part about the game is it never felt like it was wasted potential it always feels like this is a great foundation and it can only go up from here right and i think that was the biggest thing you know that came up and a lot of conversations for me and others. So really happy in general just to see the, the conversations. Just be really happy about the game. You know, and I know there's been a lot of back and forth. And there always is going to be at Sonic. So it's always going to be an ever-evolving conversation about how people feel about the game. But it, there is no doubt in any of our minds that we all had a... If you care about Sonic, you at least at the bare minimum had a good time with this game in some way. And if you adore Sonic and you're like, you just love everything about it. This game did so much for you. And I just, I love this fucking game, man. The more I think about it, the more I've played it, the more I've jumped back in. I just, I love so much about it. Despite, you know, notable flaws it has and quality of life issues and stuff. It's just, it's just a fucking fun time overall, man. I'm just, I'm really happy. Now, let's get into a few topics here. So, first of all, remember, today is your last day to vote for Sonic Frontiers for Player's Choice. I actually have this crop there, so it's Player's Choice, but it's Player's Choice at the Game Awards. So, go on the Game Awards website, go on Player's Nominees, and vote for Sonic Frontiers, because this is the last day you'll be able to vote. We cannot see the results anymore. I don't know if they did that, because they don't want people to push for the last 24 hours, or if they just thought it was getting too toxic or heated, so they took it out. But either way, go vote Sonic Frontiers, because, you know, I've been talking about this, right? To me, is Sonic Frontiers winning this? This isn't necessarily meaning that it's better than Elden Ring or God of War or whatever. It's more just to say that this was the year of Sonic. And I think Sonic Frontiers is very symbolic a lot in ways for the franchise and for the fans. You know, it's something we've wanted for a long time. We've wanted this change. You know, we've wanted something different. You know, and we want to see the franchise evolve. So even if this game isn't perfect it's something that just made us happy and sort of brought us together in so many ways and it would also be a nice way to wrap up this the year of sonic we've had i mean from movie 2 to sonic origins to idw popping off to sonic frontiers to we're getting sonic prime next week like it has been an, a, an incredible year for this series and one of my favorite years just ever because of it so i think it winning the game of the year award you know for the player's choice at the game awards is just gonna it's gonna feel good man it's gonna it's gonna be a nice feeling for the Team. It's going to be a nice feeling for the fans. We want a W, and I just keep pushing that stuff. Also, another PSA. The OST for Sonic Frontiers is officially out, by the way. So if you have Spotify or Apple Music or even YouTube right here that I'm looking at, you can go on. What, what channel is this? Uh, Sega Topics. Um, you can go and check the soundtrack for the game. I know it's technically been online. You can go watch this, but you can have a nice, the best quality possible by the team. I think you can also buy it on iTunes and stuff, but I, I usually do that. I just shoot my shit. Um, but yeah, no. So the soundtrack is out. It's over 100. 50 songs there are a bunch of bangers that you don't even get to really appreciate until you listen to the full song because sometimes you're mid combat with the mini boss and you just beat it really quickly but like the spider theme is a banger the ghost theme is a banger check all the cyberspace tracks so yeah ost is out on everything and that is a big deal because that soundtrack is fucking fire another thing i want to talk about was just feedback and reception right obviously we've had a lot of feedback you know and, and things you've been telling the team and kishimoto actually the director um has been doing like a big round of interviews just talking about this stuff so i figured i would just grab by the way Yuji Naka's training because he got arrested again what the fuck is going on bro with this guy so let's actually check a few things the team wanted to do but didn't get a chance to so by the way i want to give a big shout out to what's her name at inazumag11 uh for the translation everybody go follow him give him that good love uh ninja was really strong at first so that only a few people from the team managed to be it that's interesting comment systems like bayonetta and dmc were considered but didn't work well as a sonic game that's got a lot of heads turning when that came out um 
You know what's funny is I feel like I see what they mean, right? It's because obviously, you know, we saw this game has a combat system that's much more, you know, fun and flashy over, you know, genuine, like, pure action hack and slash where you got to do your perfect dodges and everything. Um, I don't know. Like, it's, it's, I get where they're coming from. I think maybe they mean on a more difficulty standpoint. Maybe they meant, like, arena battles, you know, where, like, you're stuck in an arena um, with a fight of some kind. Because in a lot of ways, the only, like, arena fight you have in this game is against, like, Sumo, who, like, locked you in a circle or sometimes you're fighting other boss but you can run away from pretty much any boss battle in the game but yeah i don't know i i don't really know what they mean because again the combat doesn't feels like bay on dmc but easier but if they could evolve this, you know, that would be awesome. But if they evolve the combats and they have to, I wouldn't mind that either. 50 to 60 playtested the game in each playtest, which is, I think that's why there were so many leaks about the game. I mean, like, there were so many people playtesting this. It made sense why we were seeing leaks from, like, two years ago that were 100% correct. You know, just talking about how there was an island you went on. You were just going getting chaos emotes. You ended with a big fight at the end with Supersonic. And then, so it, it just makes sense that they had all that. So, 2013, when they were developing Lost World, Kishimoto already had the idea that every boss fight is a massive supersonic fight so that's really interesting that they've been cooking uh mentally sort of what would eventually be uh sonic what's called sonic frontiers you know we obviously had sonic lost world and then we had sonic forces um and maybe you know they just had ideas for it but yeah it's crazy especially, especially when you think about like how supersonic is not a factor in forces at all which is really depressing they took five years to complete giganta which is crazy now obviously i assume that just means that was the time it took them to really nail that supersonic style and make that style of enemy and everything but that's sort of crazy that five years to complete gigant i mean i think they want to leave a crazy good impression at first but the monster is really intimidating and i think they did a good job of nailing the the weird look of it and everything so good on them for that in the original giganto boss fight amy appears in the sky to give rings to sonic while giganto's emitting bees but it was cut because it breaks the bits yeah i agree with that I've, i honestly feel like it would have been a little annoying if like amy was flying over and you sort of had to go collect rings from her i feel like having this tight concise concise fight where it's just you versus this titan and so and it's an epic 1v1 is absolutely way better what they cared about the level design of areas is that getting lost could be an enjoyment instead of uncomfortableness i i'm like 50 50 on this you know i think i've got better with navigating areas island there are moments where i'm sort of like oh where the fuck do i go i'm sort of underground here how do i get to this spot but i feel like the more you learn the lay of the land the more you learn to mess with the environment sort of get through stuff you know easier i understand what they're talking about you know they want the environment to also feel a puzzle in some ways in the original wyvern boss fight sonic runs on the back of it instead of the glowing road that's interesting i mean i feel like the reason they went with the glowing road um was sort to make it longer because wyvern isn't really that long you know, if you ran across him, it wouldn't have been too long of a chase. But I do like the red glowing road sort of, you know, it's like squid. Squid! Uh, Super Sonic Cutting Through the Night is inspired by Goemon Ishikawa from Lupin the Third. Okay, I, I get that. If you guys don't know, he's a character from Lupin the Third where he's sort of like, he's just known for slicing things, you know, very quickly and stuff. So, okay, that's sick. In the original night boss fight, it runs across the whole island using the wheels and Sonic chases it. But they scrapped the idea because it felt no different from previous games boss fights. That's a really interesting thought because I get guess maybe they were trying to go for the um the whole you know sonic colors type beat where you're sort of running and you're just dodging left and right but that's really interesting that he was gonna run across the line and it sort of explains why that fight is a little weird because he sort of spins in a wheel when you're just a sonic on the ground um and nowhere else and he has these big wheels and he chases you in the beginning but he doesn't really use them so i get what they were going for but yeah i'm, I'm kind of glad they didn't do that i, I although it would have been cool but i don't know how they would have done it because chaos island is very like separated so would he have done a thing where he jumps to another side and you would have had to chase him i have no fucking clue let's see what other stuff we got according to kishimoto the true physical appearance of the final boss hasn't been revealed yet it depends on each person how they perceive what death would look like say sonic sage see different things that's really interesting about the end that's out there um he mentioned the time constraint of the development and said they didn't have much time to make the latter part of the game because too many trials and errors in the early stage he also added that they tried to make their best true final boss even with the restrictions so there's your official confirmation about what happened with the ending of the game because i think we all pretty much unanimously agreed that that ending felt very weird you know considering the first the first three islands of the game are like feel that's the game and it feels fantastic and then when you get to you know raya island you're like oh okay this is a cutscene thing it's sick uh but this is just a side of an island that's just designed for this and then you get to the last part which is uranus and uranus i love that island but it is sort of you know 
Chronos Part Two. Um, but I know what they mean. Obviously, the final fight and stuff. But yeah, I, I, I this you can definitely tell what they meant by this. But they did their best, you know. And, and I'm, I'm still happy with how it ended up. And of course, another final one here is momentum or physics were taken into consideration during the development, and they studied which parts needed or not. Kishimoto stated why the game's controls feel like a hybrid of adventure games and recent Sonic games. So that makes a lot of sense, actually, when you think about it. How sort of there isn't really too much momentum in the open world besides certain parts. Um, but I think there was a tweet where he answered uh, somebody just saying like, hey, we're going to take this into consideration. I think that is a number one thing people really want is they really do want just a bit more momentum. It doesn't have to be that the entire thing is momentum. It just has to be like certain things you do could feel a bit more natural and momentum based so either way really happy about what's going on that the team is taking feedback and kishimoto the director has had a bunch of tweets in general just saying like hey we're taking all this feedback into consideration we also want to update the game we also want to see what's going on and be prepared for the future so very happy and obviously we also have the sonic frontiers dlc again i did an extensive video time about that but this is awesome this is confidence in fact i think i saw a tweet about another thing here which is let me find this yeah kishimoto just confirmed that 2023 content drop is due to the reception support of the game is gathered we're getting free extensive content to supply uh sonic and that's unreal so i love that about this like to me that's really fucking awesome that they they, they were so happy with the reception that they were confident to announce this stuff i don't even know like this could have been stuff that they had planned but maybe they were like let's not reveal until we see how the game is doing but the fact that the game is doing so well they were like fuck it let's just give them some joy to end off this year you know and i'm just i'm really excited for this especially update one i feel like i'm i'm actually most excited for update one obviously update three that's obviously the Meg going with the playable care. I just, I can't believe we're getting playable characters, man. I just, ah, take me back, bro. Take me back. You know what I'm saying, bro? But yeah, no. So overall, you know, it's been a month with the game, and I'm just, I'm really happy with where we're at. You know, I'm happy with how where the conversations are. And I'm really happy with the state of the game, what's to come for the game, and just everything about it. Just to me, speaks well. And obviously, I want to give a big shout out to the mods too. The modding scene has been incredible for this game. I mean, we're we're a month in, and we have mods, you know, that turn side to a gun that one shots enemies. You got physics changes. You got a bunch of crazy character model swaps like the stuff you are doing is incredible so i definitely encourage you to check that shit out on pc because it makes the game better there's one crazy shadow mod there's a bunch of them you guys all know about that stuff so guys let me know what you think about sonic frontiers let me know what you're most excited for let me know what state of what's what's your favorite part of the game right now are you most excited for more mods are you most excited for dlc are you just happy with the state of the game talk to me let me know and of course thank you all for watching i'll see you all next time peace out